Hey guys, welcome to another video from MindPal, where we show you how to build multi-agent workflows to automate business processes. In today's video, let's learn how to create a four-in-one AI workflow to automate the entire process of evaluating job applications from start to finish. I refer to it as four-in-one because in this large workflow displayed on the screen, there are actually four child workflows working together to complete this process. Let's take a closer look at each of these steps. In the first step, application info. The workflow requests human input for the candidate's CV in the form of a document, along with the job description. Next, it moves into phase one screening, where we'll call the job candidate CV screener subflow to conduct the screening process. This child workflow takes the same inputs as its parent workflow, including the candidate's CV and the job description. We can pre-fill the initial human input fields in this case by referencing the human input values from the previous step, application info. This is how the job candidate CV screener workflow is set up. First, it performs a pre-screening check to verify minimum requirements, identify major red flags, and assign a score for the candidate. Then, it conducts a core competency assessment as well as a cultural fit and other factors assessment. All three of these steps are executed by a CV screener agent that I have right here. After that, it combines all three assessments to create a radar chart. This radar chart step is executed by my data visualizer agent, which has access to execute Python code, a tool necessary for generating charts. Finally, it makes a recommendation for the candidate, suggesting whether or not they should be accepted for the interview round. Once this subflow completes its task, the parent workflow will request human input regarding the final decision on whether to accept the candidate for the interview round. This human input field will be in the form of a select type with two options, yes or no. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We will have a gate node next to decide the path of the workflow. The gate node's job is to stop the workflow if the candidate is not accepted for the interview, so the workflow will only continue if the candidate is accepted. If that is the case, phase two, the interview will begin. In phase two, we will have another subflow called the CV-based job interview questionnaire generator, which also takes these input fields from the parent workflow to generate an interview questionnaire ready for the human interviewer. This subflow is structured very simply and only has three user inputs. First, it collects the major input, followed by an interview strategy step where we have a job interview strategist identify key skills, experiences, and achievements relevant to the job, as well as highlight areas that require further clarification or exploration during the interview. The job interview strategies will be powered by DeepSeek R1, thanks to its reasoning capabilities. Next, we will have another step to generate the full interview questionnaire. This step is an orchestrator worker node, and its job is to orchestrate the generation of a comprehensive set of interview questions covering all four types behavioral, scenario-based, cultural fit, and skill-based. It will also need to decide how many questions are needed for each type, ensuring the total number of questions is around 15 to 20. This orchestrator worker node will have access to four worker agents that it can utilize, which are the four worker agents I have built and trained to generate questions for each of the four types. When we run the workflow, this node will flexibly plan how many questions are needed and what topics or areas to cover for each type of question before assigning these four agents to execute the task. After the phase two interview questionnaire generator step, the human interviewer can use this material to conduct the interview and return to the workflow with a decision on whether to accept the candidate for the job, along with any raw comments, if applicable. For each decision, we will have a separate process to follow afterward. That's why we need a router node after this to direct the job application to the appropriate processing path. The logic here is that if the candidate is accepted, we should proceed to the post-acceptance node. Otherwise, if the candidate is rejected, we should move to the post-rejection step. In the post-acceptance step, we will call the post-acceptance job application processor subflow. In the post-rejection step, we have a different workflow called the post-rejection application processor. So how are they set up? In the post-acceptance job application processor workflow, we will need to generate a hiring decision debrief report for this candidate, as well as create an acceptance letter to offer to the candidate and a welcome announcement to share with the team. This content will be generated by an AI agent powered by Claude 3.5 Sonnet, as I needed to closely align with our brand voice. 
The next step will involve onboarding this candidate by conducting a skill gap analysis and developing a personalized training plan for them. Meanwhile, for the post-rejection job application processor, we will only need to generate a hiring decision debrief report to justify the decision, along with a personalized rejection letter. So that's how this end-to-end -end job application processor is set up. At this point, you may be wondering why we need to develop these four processes as separate workflows and connect them to the larger workflow as subflows instead of simply adding them as steps in the main workflow. There are two reasons for this. First, by separating the concerns, it makes it easier for the builder to maintain each of these processes. Second, it provides more flexibility and convenience for us to use the individual workflows separately if needed. For example, there may be cases where we want to skip the screening process and jump straight to the interview questionnaire generator step. In that case, all we need to do is call the job interview questionnaire generator workflow separately and use it. Now that you understand how this workflow is set up, let's try running it to see it in action. Let's provide a candidate's CV and a job description here, then click Start to kick off the workflow. First, we have Phase 1 screening, which we'll call the Subflow CV Screener. Since we have already configured this step to pre-fill the initial input fields of this subflow, you can see that the user input step of the subflow has already been populated here. All we need to do is double check and click continue. This CV screener will perform a screening assessment for three aspects, all done by Gemini 2.0 Flash. The reason I chose Gemini 2.0 Flash for all of these screening assessments is that it has reasoning capabilities and is very fast making it the perfect choice for cases where speed is important. After completion, all three assessments results will be passed to the data visualizer to create a radar chart visualizing the candidate's performance, as you can see here. Then, this is the final recommendation. It suggests that we should move forward with this candidate. Now the parent workflow is asking for my final decision. I can say yes and click continue. This is a gate node, and it detects that my decision is yes, so it decides to continue the workflow instead of stopping it. Now let's move into phase two of the workflow, where we will call the job interview questionnaire generator. First, this subflow will develop an interview strategy, which is done by DeepSeeker1. It's showing its thought process, as you can see here, and this is the final answer. The interview strategy outlining the areas we should explore when interviewing this candidate. Next, we move on to the interview questionnaire generation step itself where this orchestrator worker node is planning four tasks for four types of questions and assigning the number of questions needed for each type. As you can see here, it's assigning four behavioral interview questions for the behavioral question generator step, then three scenario-based interview questions, followed by three cultural fit interview questions, and finally four skill-based interview questions. In total, we have 15 questions, which is sufficient for the range I requested. All of these question generator agents are powered by O3 Mini. I really enjoy using DeepSeek R1 and O3 Mini in the same workflow because it combines the best of both worlds. After the interview questionnaire is completed, I can take this questionnaire and conduct the interview myself, then return with a decision. In this case, let's say my decision is yes, and I can provide some raw comments. For now, let's say not applicable then I will have my router direct the job application to the post acceptance step. It's calling the post acceptance job application processor to help me generate the hiring decision debrief report, as well as other content and materials needed to onboard this candidate to the company. This is the acceptance letter we can use to share with the candidate, written based on the candidate's profile and the job description. Next is a welcome announcement to share with the team about the new team member. Then we can conduct a skill gap analysis to understand what training is needed for this candidate. Finally, we will create a personalized onboarding training plan for the candidate, including all the training modules, as you can see here. And that's it. Within minutes, we have successfully processed this application from end to end. You can try this workflow yourself using the link in the video description, as well as duplicate this workflow to your own workspace for further customization. You can customize every single step of this workflow to fit exactly what your company needs. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.